All right, everyone, it's time to address the issue of mug get a real job sort of mentality because, you know, you experience that a little bit when you become a creator, you know, like whether you've sort of made it or not, <laughs> it basically is the same thing. Uh, there are people out there that do not believe that, uh, for example, they think that I don't work. Uh, they think the only thing that I do really is is make videos in the morning, and that's you know requires work too, but it's admittedly not a 40 hour a week sort of expenditure. Uh, but I actually work more than 40 hours a week because at the same time I'm also an editor and a writer. Uh, among other things, now I'm doing music, so you know you have to do multiple takes when you're doing that shit. Uh, and then the coordinating with people for like business purposes, fucking even that can take several hours out of your week easily. Just making fucking Skype calls with people. Uh, so it's probably closer to a 50 hour week or something like that. It might even be more, like, you gotta realize it's a seven day a week job, like, again, the idea of a vacation is a foreign concept to most content creators. A vacation means, like, a lot of them, they use Instagram, so, like, their idea of a vacation is, okay, I'm, I'm plugging from YouTube and shit, they're still putting out Instagram photos. They're still coordinating with fucking their brand manager, their attorney, or <laughs> whatever, their accountant, uh, and, you know, you have a good time, and, and that's the other thing. Nobody who's a creator who's made it has a right to complain because even when it gets stressful You're like well, I get deplatformed off Facebook or something like you know You have to hammer things together so to speak It's still more rewarding than a regular job admittedly for people who have that sort of mentality Sort of more like like I can't have a boss in the standard sense I'd rather Google loosely govern what I'm doing on YouTube, which is fine. Just hang on loosely and you know don't deplatform me, bro <laughs> But I've always noticed I've noticed that a lot of the the people that dislike me the most is like um this is partially sparked by some Twitter username um, uh, Russo I think is, is something I can't remember the username uh, but he was bitching basically uh, about the laptop fund uh, and when confronted you know went crazy and started saying like he, he thought I went to gay pride parades <laughs> and so I've noticed there are two things that I've noticed number one most of the critics. They're, they're like people that you don't know anything about them. Like, they, they prefer the anonymity. And I don't have a problem with that. It's like, some people get freaked out by that. It's sort of the way the web works. So they don't want to show themselves. It's like, well, you know, you get a regular job. And I'm, I'm imagining someone who's like, you know, obese and a loser. And, you know, doesn't really have a life of their own. So they just ship post. Uh, which is possible. Or it could be their corporate CEO and they're just ship posting under an anonymous account. I wouldn't know and I don't care. Uh, I'm not a respecter of persons in that sense, if you know what I'm saying. But the other thing is they always tend to be so homophobic. I don't understand. And it's not like, it's not like, like, I don't have a problem with someone saying, well, I believe in traditional marriage. Like, that's not homophobia. You just have, like, moral beliefs or whatever. Now, I'm talking about people who, like, make it an obsession. Like, they only talk about, like, I guess they imagine that I'm gay or something. And that's the only thing they want to talk about. And they also think that I find that insulting. I'm sitting here thinking to myself, you think that, like, going after my personal appearance or what pretended sexual proclivities I have is going to bother me. I've been on the internet long enough not to care about these things, but they always say, like, the, the most dumb shit. Like, they say the same few things over and over. Uh, you know, incel, uh, gay, or, or, you know, something, or just a loser in general, something like that. I'm like, okay, so which is it? You think I'm a loser, like, I guess a need or something? Or you're upset about the fact that I crowdfund? Which of these is it? Because they're mutually exclusive. Like, either I've made it and you think that I'm, like, just being dishonest and lazy, or I haven't made it and I'm a total loser or something. And then he was talking about, and people have done this well, what, you know, basically what happens when you get deplatformed. It doesn't matter. It literally wouldn't matter at this point. I'm on so many alt tech sites. I'm number one on BitChute, dude. You know, there's 37,000 people following the work just there. Subscribe star is a thing. You know, uh, Mines is a thing. Gab is a thing. BitChute exists. There's DTube and Steemit. There are more alt tech sites coming now, and they're developing even more services. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sit there and govern my life out of fear of being fired, which is basically the equivalent off of one of these mainline platforms. Especially when the thing is, my message ultimately, uh, over time, it's not extreme or bigoted in any way. The bigotry seems to come more from people that don't like me, <laughs> to tell the truth. They're the ones that have a stick up their ass. Like I say, like, white privilege doesn't exist. Oh, white racism. Uh, you know, I say, you know, I have long hair, I guess, and that makes me gay or, or transvestite in some people's opinions. Some of these people think I tr uh, cross-dress, actually. Look up churro strap. See if it's actually me. That'll be funny when people see that. By the way, not safe for work, definitely. Uh, he does some weird shit. He actually is a cross-dresser. I think he's Italian or something. 
Always a good time. No, I love the internet. This is the other thing, though. I never get rankled by it because the internet drama is actually kind of funny. Like it is, it's entertaining. Let's uh, let's take this seriously. It's entertaining, and it is fun to troll people, like to bother them and you know be antagonistic and stuff. Uh, I just wish people would be a little bit more accurate in their criticisms. Like if you're if you're going to criticize me, say like you don't think that YouTube is a job, okay? But I do work at it. You don't think my editing is good? Well, you know, a lot of these people haven't actually read any of my works. I strongly believe that there were some shit posters that talked. I think it was on X, actually, on 4chan. That were talking about my edits, and I guess a few people that didn't like me were like, "Oh, well, they're all shitty and stuff." Uh, and I strongly believe that other people that don't like me just sort of read that and took it to heart without actually the benefit of understanding my work. Like they probably haven't even opened a single one. They probably don't, you know, they don't like me. They wouldn't want to give me the money, so they're not going to buy a copy, which is fine. But don't complain about things you're ignorant of. It's sort of like you know, complaining, you know, Christian parents saying Harry Potter will cause your child to worship the devil, and they never read it. Or like saying, like, the Bible will indoctrinate your kids. Well, atheists, hey, out there, you should definitely fucking read the Bible with your kids. They'll, they, you know, they're more likely to stay atheistic if you do, I think. No offense, but, you know, there's some weird shit in there. Like that part about, I think it was Jacob, and he takes the striped rods and puts them before the goats, and they give birth, and the goats are stripy, so that he can have more goats. Like he had some deal with his neighbor or his... his master or something like that. I can't remember the exact story, and it's like, that's not how genetics works. It worked somehow, though, by the power and grace of Jehovah. Uh, yeah, get a real job. I have one. Uh, it, it's quite a wonderful one. A real job is whatever you decide is a real job and happens to pay the bills. What other definition can you give? What, do you have to do mind-bending amounts of manual labor in order to do a job? Well, then my gardening kind of counts, I guess. But, I mean, certainly, you know, the, the average white-collar position wouldn't be work if that's the case. What, I have to go go be the uh, uh, Louisiana line man or whatever that song is that I mentioned in another video. I don't know, it's a funny song. Uh, you know, and sit out there with, like, the leather, you know, pants on and, and my helmet and shit and, like, go out there and maybe get electrocuted. I have to be a Cigarro Cactus relocator. Like, I have to have that sort of job in order for it to be an actual form of employ. Not having a boss is pretty great. Not, uh, I would never look down on people that do have to deal with that bullshit because, you know, I've had regular jobs before. <laughs> Mostly odd jobs, though, in the past. Like, you got to realize, that I'm entering the job market basically when the recession begins. Whoops! Perfect, uh, you know, an imperfect timing. There go all the jobs. You know, now I'm competing with people with a fucking master's degree or 10 years of experience uh, for a janitorial position. Yeah, I'm sure I'm going to be able to compete with my crippling social anxiety. <laughs> it's going to be a fun time. All I want to do is be either a delivery person or a night janitor so I wouldn't have to interact with everyone. I go in and clean the shit. I del make your delivery. I fucking, uh, you take it off of the forklift. I drive off. I just sit there all day listening to music and driving shit around. Would have been a perfect job for me. Instead, I end up doing this, which is like as much public exposure as you could possibly get. I don't understand it. And like my, it was, it was funny. Uh, here's the other thing, as an aside. My weakest subject, like, um, I can't remember which grade, but when they were doing like the general, like the IQ test and everything else, like exams and basically everything, aptitude tests or whatever, my lowest skill was in editing. And the other one was in, in organizing. Uh, and so it was really, really funny because now I do editing and I have to organize like everything around me because I'm self-employed. And so it's so crazy. Uh, and like what one of the worst things was whenever you had to give a speech or, or be up in front of class or something. And now I, you know, turned on the webcam and <laughs> do that every day. It's actually a very strange. I did a total 180 from my youth in some aspects. But it is a real job. And I've I told this dude and I've told everyone else who's ha bitches about what I do for a living. Try my workload for a single week. You will collapse. You won't be able to do it. Get up in the morning. You get up and, and don't sleep in too late. You get up. You gotta find ideas for videos, make four of them. It's like a half an hour, sometimes upwards of an hour of content. You might make more, you know, make a garden update or something. And you've gotta get people to be interested in it. No, don't just throw shit at the wall and hope it sticks. Have something to say. You do that, 
then you settle in. You don't eat breakfast, by the way, because fuck breakfast. Uh, and then you start editing. And while you're doing that, you're multitasking. You've also got to keep up to date with like your branding manager and your you know your friends and contacts and stuff. You make some calls and shit. You got to talk to a million people. Now try to plow through like 50 or 60 pages of editing throughout the day. By the way, break that up with going outside for brief periods just for a little bit of relaxation. Get a little exercise. So you don't fucking have a stroke at 40 or something. Yeah, and then basically do that until, you know, sometime around 4 o'clock you can have a meal finally. <laughs> and then, then you do more work, and then you can relax for a while, but you're kind of working anyway. And you do that until, uh, you know, 11 o'clock or midnight sometimes. Try that, and do that seven days a week for the whole week. Yeah, rewarding, lucrative, but it is work. That's about all. Peace out.